Hi and welcome to our online service. We are so glad that you could join us today. I'm sure you're excited about the word, but before we get there, I want to thank you for supporting us with your giving. Now it is your giving that enables us to do the things that we do at Limitless. With that, I want to encourage you to give. Well, there are various ways you can give. All the details are on the screen. For now, let's get into the word. Hey, welcome to Limitless Church. Thank you so much for tuning in. Everybody here is so glad and we really, really hope you could join us someday. And I also want to welcome everybody who's joined us today. Thank you for making it. Uh, let me tell you, you are here today because somebody prayed for you to be here. Somebody welcomed you, somebody invited you and called you and you are not here by accident. Amen. Amen. Now, over the weeks of this sermon series, one thing I've learned personally is that our mind is actually a source of power. So many times we've been told by various places and various people, you've probably heard that our mind is the source of most of our problems. But it's only in the kingdom of God and in the word of God that you will hear that your mind is the source of power. It's the most powerful thing ever. Now I'm going to take you back to the scripture that we started this sermon series with. Romans 12 verse 2. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Everybody say transformed. transformed. By the renewing, everybody say renewing, renewing of your minds. Okay, thank you. Very obedient crowd. <laughs> so the pattern of this world is to celebrate what is good and to stress about what is bad. Have you had that this week? Have you had like an up and down? So I know some people were really happy about some things and some people were really stressed out about some things. We all know, right? Yeah, we all know the results and it was good for some, it was bad. But that's what the pattern of this world is. It's up and down, it's up and down. And you've been doing this for your whole life. But this is what I love about God. He's like... There needs to be a change. You need a break. You need a break from this pattern. And he says, you need to be renewed. Isn't our God so loving? He doesn't want you to be stuck in a routine. He wants change for you. He wants you to be refreshed. And that's what your relationship with God should be like. It should never be a routine. It should renew you, it should energize you, it should wake you up, it should shake you up, it should bring a smile on your face because God is amazing, man. He is so loving. This relationship that you have with God is the most perfect relationship you can have. And what better way to express this relationship through worship? How many of you guys just love worshiping God? Did you guys have an amazing time today? Today was something else, man. Uh, I want you to know from a um, from few of you, you can shout out your answers. What is your favorite worship song? Come on, shout out your answers. Over and over. Over and over. Anybody else? Huh? Prodigal Son, over and over. That's the remix version, I think. Waymaker, anybody else? All right, keep those songs with you, okay? Because you'll need them towards the end. Uh, so those are your favorite songs. And I remember when it was my first time leading worship. Uh, I think it's going to be nine years this year of me leading worship. And uh, I still remember how I was when I just started. I was so nervous. I was so nervous about people liking the songs. Like I was so nervous about, uh, you know, singing and playing at the same time. I didn't even think this would be possible. I was ready to settle that I might probably be nervous my whole life. I still am. But uh, I was so conscious. I was so conscious of myself. And I was so afraid of disappointing people. You know, because back then, being a worship leader was really, really, really tough. I love leading worship in Limitless Church. Let me tell you that. 
all right but back then it was so tough because you used to think that uh, if i take this song what if the person who's doing ministry or the pastor doesn't like it or he comes and he just stops you because those things used to happen worship team ever had experience so i remember most of the times when i used to lead worship i used to get caught up in these things later on god would flow through eventually he would flow through but at the start it was really really evident that there was a lot going on with me and one day someone uh, came uh, one of a friend of mine who is also a worship leader he came up to me and he gave me some advice now i didn't know whether he was giving me advice because he really cared or he had a crush on me but he gave me an advice okay and uh, one of the advice that he gave me was ash when you're leading worship get your head out of the way get your head out of the way because worship is supposed to be in spirit so it's not about what's going through in your mind so you get your head out of the way and i looked at him and i was like wow that is so where did you hear that from and he's he he's like uh, no i heard this there was an uh, american worship leader who you know sharing her experience and she mentioned this she said get your head out of the way and back then i really believed that because hey any advice that comes from america you have to take it right <laughs> i mean back then i didn't think that indians would be wise to figure it out for themselves <laughs> but i was like dude this this advice is come from america i need to take this seriously i need to get my head out of the way uh, so uh, i i try to do that but it, it really didn't seem possible so i was like he is right about leading through the spirit but how do i get my head out of the way and following that i started to hear that more and more from every place i went to when i went to a worship concert even the worship leader would be like get your head out of the way allow the spirit to flow through and i'm like man this american worship leader is so <laughs> popular <laughs> and listen that was good advice but that was only half advice it is good it was right you have to lead worship and you have to worship by the spirit but that's half advice like how you have half knowledge how many of you guys know half knowledge is dangerous half knowledge is is worse than no knowledge at all and it's so crazy because this happens a lot with us in christianity it's not that we don't read the bible sometimes we don't read half the bible but even that's okay sometimes we don't read the entire verse we read half the verse and because of that because we have people who only read half the verse we have so much division in the church we have fights we have disagreements we have a battle in opinions because we have a lot of people who are reading only half the verse and let me tell you what i'm talking about open your bibles to john chapter 4 verse 24 and it says this god is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth everybody say in truth, in truth. so god is spirit he is a living being he is alive but your worship is only complete if you worship him in spirit but also in truth amen now a lot of you guys are wondering i know what worship in the spirit means and i get i know you and i know you understand that because there are a lot of sermons like that you've heard so many people preach about that but none of us really know what is worship in truth sometimes we know the verse yes we worship in spirit and in truth but we do not know what it is to worship in truth so what is worshiping in truth worshiping in truth is worshiping with an awareness and a knowledge of who god is what is his nature what he has done in the bible 
the son that he died on the cross for you, all the works of God, that is to worship in truth. Because you, when you worship him, you're worshiping something that you know about him. You're not worshiping based on what you experienced. You're worshiping based on what God has already done. Amen? And where are you going to find this truth? You're going to find this truth in the word of God. Now, when you do not worship God in truth, your worship starts being based on whatever you're feeling, on whatever you're going through, on whatever is around you. And listen, worship is only complete when your focus of worship is God and not what is happening around you. And that's why today, sometimes we have certain songs that do not reflect who God is. It reflects a lot about what my situation is, what my feeling is, what I'm going through, how I feel. And that's why it is so important that we write songs based on the word of God and not based on how we're feeling. I love the songs that we took today because all the songs that we spoke today and we sang today were based on the word of God. That Jesus is king, he's risen from the dead, he is with us. I love that. And it's so important to worship God in truth. Listen, church, we are called to experience the fullness of God's nature by worship. But we are not called to define the nature of God through our experience. And that's what I wanted to say today is truth is the connection to your mind and worship. And that's what I'm preaching about today. I'm preaching about the mind and worship. And truth is the thing that connects your mind and your worship. Amen? Amen. Now, there are people who, you know, this is very popular here and around the world is we have a lot of people who are of two extremes. We have people who are only leaning more towards the spirit and we have people who only lean more towards the truth, which is the word of God. Now, both these extremes are bad. That's why it's so important that even in church and even in our studying of the word of God, that we balance it out. We teach both things very equally. So a lot of people who lean into only truth, man, they know the Bible like the back of their hand. They know every verse, they know every scripture, they know the page number, they know everything. You know how those roadside Romeo stand on the road and they give pickup lines to girls? Yeah, like that, people who are leaning into the word, they give pickup lines to unbelievers. Like, uh, hey, nothing is impossible with God. Like, you know, like, and why I'm saying this is because they have so much knowledge, but when something starts happening, they start to shake. They start to fear. They start to send you WhatsApp messages. And you're like, but where was the word? And what that tells you is when you lean too much into the truth and just the truth, you are becoming a Christian that's not real. Because you have no real experience. But on the flip side, there are people who lean too much into the spirit. Too, and we are very nice to these people, okay? I would say the people who lean into the word of God are actually the minority. But there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who lean so much into the spirit. It's all about that. And, um, you know, because of that, these people who lean so much into the spirit... They go ahead and they, they focus so much on the moves of the Spirit, the works of the Spirit, the signs, uh, the prophetic, and everything, but emphasize very little on the Word of God. So even though you experience, you're, you're going only by what you experienced. You're going only by what you felt. Like I remember um, I was hearing the story of one lady and she said she was so filled with the spirit apparently that she could not enter a restaurant 
because she felt that there was witchcraft being done in the restaurant. And I'm like, but you carry the spirit of God on the inside of you. Like, how can you be scared? No, it's just what I've experienced. It's what I experienced. But if you read the word of God, you would know that you cannot stand when you carry the presence of God inside of you. Nothing can stand against you. And because of that, people who lean more into the spirit are weak Christians. Because one has no real experience, this one has no real foundation. Your experience can't keep you going for very long. And here's the thing, it's very, very easy to get people connected to an experience. Very, very easy. In fact, people who lean so much into the spirit are often people who lead these experiences. And the easiest way to control people is when they don't know a lot. The easiest way to convince people is when it's through an experience, but the easiest way to control people is when those people you're leading don't have any knowledge about what you're saying. That's why it is so important that truth needs to be a connection between your mind and your worship. And hey, this is not just happening in the church, it's also happening in the world around us. Apparently, the era in which we are living in is called the post-truth era. And what that era means is that we give so much importance to an emotion, to an opinion, to an experience, rather than what the facts are. Today, when you hear uh, debates on news channels, it's all about post-truth. If the news anchor is angry with you, your point is gone. Nobody cares about your point. He is upset with you and that is the truth. Whatever is his verdict, it's his verdict. Because that's the world we live in today. It's all about what I experience. But it's so important. It's absolutely important to have truth in worship. Only then your worship is strong. Only then your worship is meaningful. Now, uh, What's so great about worshiping in truth? It's okay. Am I trying to like uh, make you guys scholars? Am I trying to make you write an exam? That's why when you come here to worship, I will ask you who is the father of Jesus. I won't ask you that before we start worship, okay? We won't have a Bible quiz ever. But what's the point? Because truth leads to transformation. And the Bible says... Whoever has the truth, the truth will set you free. Amen. Experience is not just going to set you free. The truth is going to set you free. Amen? Amen? And that's what leads to transformation. And you're only going to be transformed when you are renewed in worship. When you are renewed in worship. Now, the pattern of this world uh, is eat Pray, sleep, repeat. Eat, pray, sleep, repeat. You're thinking, no, this is a Christian thing. No, 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 no. Everybody does it. Eat, pray, sleep, and repeat. This is the pattern of the world. But if you want transformation, you need to renew, 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 renew. You need to renew your mind. And what does it mean to renew? Renew is to remember is to refresh and is to rejoice in who God is and what he has done for you and what he is going to do for you and what he has done in the Bible. And that's what we did today for around 45 minutes. We were renewing our mind. That's why it is so important to get renewed in worship. And once you've done that a number of times, renew yourself again. Because there's always something new that you can know about God. There's no end to his definition. There's always something new that you can learn about him. Now, transformation only will happen when the truth becomes your truth. Transformation is only going to happen 
until the word of God becomes the word that you carry on the inside of you. And how do you do that? How do you do that? Everybody knows the song, um, One Thing Remains? Yeah. All right. You know, there's, there's that line in the song, Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. You guys want to sing with me? Yeah. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, okay? Awesome. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. Now that, that song is based on the Psalm 136. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Again it says, Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. So what are they doing in worship? They're renewing their mind with the truth about God's nature. God is good and God is the most powerful. And his love endures forever. His love endures forever. Then we go to the next part of the psalm. Psalm 136 was 13 to 14. To him who divided the Red Sea. Asunder, I don't know what asunder means. His love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. Now in this part, you are renewing your mind by worshipping God for what he has done in the world. By what he has done in the world. And his love endures forever. And a little bit of history about this psalm. When Solomon completed the temple, this, this psalm was being sung. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. What was your favorite song? Waymaker? You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. What about another in the fire? There is another in the fire. 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 So you are singing, you are being transformed until that truth becomes your truth. You have to sing it till you believe it. You have to sing it till it becomes your truth. Because there are a lot of songs out there in the world that you've been singing. Probably you're singing, this world is terrible. India is terrible, India is terrible, India is terrible, India is terrible, India is terrible. And guess what? That's the truth you're believing. That's the song you're singing. But what if you change that song? What if you take what God says about, about nations in the Bible? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You need to worship God in spirit and in truth. And you need to worship till this truth becomes your truth. Amen. That's why we sing in church. We don't sing in church to feel good. We don't sing in church to feel amazing. We don't sing in church just to take your auditions. Yeah, I can hear a lot of y'all singing and I secretly judge y'all. But hey, that's not why you're singing. In fact, the whole method of singing in history, the whole importance of singing was so that people could be taught things. It was easier to teach people history. It was easy to teach people facts when it was put in a song. The whole purpose of singing is so that you can learn. The whole purpose of singing is so that you can grow in knowledge. What have you been singing lately? Because the more you sing, you are renewing your mind with that truth. The more you sing, the more it starts becoming your truth. And let me tell you, every situation in the Bible is tried and tested and 100% successful for your life. If you feel you're in the fire, let me tell you, there were four guys in the fire who made it out. Sorry, there were three guys in the fire. The fourth guy made sure that they came out alive. Everything in your life 
has an answer in the word of God. And listen, I don't want to discount the Holy Spirit because this is what the Holy Spirit does with what you know. The Bible says, and I've not got the, I'm not the, got the scripture reference for it, but it says that the Holy Spirit teaches you all things and brings into remembrance the things that God has spoken. Yeah. Let me tell you all something. The only difference, uh, have you all ever been to school, by the way? Yeah. Everyone has been to school? All right. The only thing that you and your teacher have in common is you know what? What? You all have never been to school. Is the textbook, guys. You and your teacher both have the textbook. Yeah, your teacher has the knowledge, but you have the textbook. All right? How is the Holy Spirit supposed to teach you if you don't carry your textbook? How is the Holy Spirit just going to speak to you if you don't read the word of God? The whole purpose of the Holy Spirit is so that he makes this word come alive to you. He's going to teach you and he's going to make you understand. But here's the thing. He's not just going to speak to you into your ear and be like, I know the plans I have for you. No. No, he's going to show you. The Holy Spirit is going to show you what that looks like. He's going to show you and make you feel what that feels like. And that's why when you come here and you worship and you worship God in truth, the Holy Spirit makes that truth come alive to you. But you need to worship in truth. You are not going to know about God's holiness just by standing here and experiencing. You have to read about his holiness. You need to understand his holiness. Then the Holy Spirit will make you explain what that looks like. You can't just experience God's goodness. You need to read about his goodness in the Bible. You need to read about how he's been good to Israel. You need to read about how he's been good to all the people who worshipped him. Only then you will be able to experience that in your life. Let me tell you, truth gives your experience definition. Truth will define your experience. That's why you need to worship in truth. And you need to sing it till it happens. And you need to sing it till it becomes a reality to you. Because there are some powerful things that happen when you sing. If you don't believe me, we'll turn to Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. A little context about this. Paul and Silas were two apostles. They were revolutionaries. All right, they were put in jail for preaching the word of God. And apparently when that happened, they were bound, up, I don't really know, it's called stocks. And when you, your feet are in stocks, it is very painful. It is very hard to do anything or to even think when you are in that much pain. But this is what they did. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains became loose the more you worship the truth the more you see the truth take place in your life let me tell you, when you get transformed by the truth, when you get transformed by the word of God, even the people around you get transformed. Even the people around you are going to experience freedom because you know what? You didn't stop singing. Keep on singing. Look at your neighbor and say, keep on singing. The mind, the mind and the worship connection is not an ordinary connection. So keep on singing singing now how do you know whether someone has been transformed how do you know because people can fake it right yeah how do you <laughs> how do you know whether whether someone has been transformed you see their response the one way you can know whether someone 
is transformed is by seeing how they respond. The one way you can know if someone really knows God and has the knowledge of God and has the truth is when you see how they respond to the truth. God is good. God is good. That's your response. You guys should be going crazy. God is good. I believe y'all are, that's real, okay? <laughs> and, and listen, it doesn't matter what the situation, what the condition, what the environment around you, what's, what's, the, what's the trend around you, what everybody else is going through, your response is fixed. Your response is worship. Say, my response is fixed. My response is, my response is worship. Because when you carry the truth about God, when you are really transformed by the truth of God, it really shows in how you respond. When you know God, you will know how to worship Him. When you know God, you will know how to worship Him. When you know God is holy, you will know how to respond to His holiness. You will bow. When you know God is faithful, you know how you will respond? You will respond with gratitude. When you know God is good, you will respond with praise. When you know God is your provider, He's your giver, you will respond with giving. When you know God is king, you will respond with serving. Amen? When you know God is a redeemer, a deliverer, He has set you free, you will respond with a shout. Because only people who have been set free can, can shout out loud. I want to know, what is your response today morning to who God is? Church, let's grow in the truth of who God is. Let's grow in knowledge of who God is. And I just want to take this opportunity to tell you is that come for the Bible study on Tuesday. You need to know this God you worship. You need to understand who he is. Otherwise, all you're doing here is you're just experiencing, but you have no real foundation. When you go home, you cannot take the band with you. You cannot take the worship with you. You cannot take me with you. You cannot take Zia. You cannot take David. Some of you like him. You cannot take, uh, you cannot take these lights with you. You cannot take this experience with you, but you will always have the word of God. Because the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. If you want your worship to be alive at home, if you want your worship to be unwavering at home, you need to base it on the truth of who God is. Amen? So that's my word for today. That's your mind and worship connection.